Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've got a full width automated testimonial slider for you today. Really easy to do. There's no extra coding or plugins involved in this today. We're building this just with the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself. So I've got mine sliding every four seconds here. It's going to pop up with a new one. Really easy to do. We're using the slider module for this today. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And let's go down and I'm going to start a new section. Little blue button right there. I'm going to make it a reg regular section initially. And I'm going to put a single column in there. Divi comes as, with all these modules as standard. I'm going to use the slider module today. There it is. I'm just going to pop that one in. And there it's put it in down below. While we're here, I'm going to delete the section above. Okay, so there's our basic slider right there. And what we want to do here is turn that into a name and perhaps have the testimonial there. If you want a button, that's fine. You can perhaps say learn more if you want to take people to put a specific page afterwards. And we're going to de decorate the background with a gradient and a bit of a pattern. And we're going to add an image and make it round. So let's just delete the second slide. We'll work on the first one. We're in the main slider settings here. And we're in the content. And I'm going to go into that first slide right there. So hit the little cog to go inside. For the title, I'm going to use this for the name field for our testimonial slider. So let's say John Davis or whatever, whatever, the, whatever the name you've got for your testimonial up there. For the button, if you choose to have a button, put what you want in there. If you don't want a button, simply delete that. The button will disappear. If you do, put in what you want your button to say. And then if I slide down a bit more, you can add the link for your button down below in the link field. And if you want the actual module to link somewhere, you can put a similar link or different link there as well if you want to. So the button will link to one place. The whole module itself will link to somewhere else. Always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. OK, well, let's go back up to our text. We've got our button down in our content here. I'm going to add an image. I'm going to pretend this is the testimonial itself there. So I'm just going to put some inverted commas either side of it. Make it look a little bit more like a quote. And just above it, I'm going to put my image or the image of the person making the testimonial. So I'm going to put my cursor just above it. I've made a space there. I'm going to hit the add media button. And I'm going to choose an image. Now, just as a side note, I'm going to make my images round in a minute with a tiny bit of CSS. And you don't have to do this, it's entirely up to you, or you can upload round images. To create a round image, you need to start off with a square image, perfectly square. So if you've got images, crop them until they're square if you want to make them round. Okay, so I've got this square image here. I'm going to pop this fella in. There he is right there. Now I want to pop him into the middle. So what I'm going to do is click on it. Hit the align center. That's fine. And you haven't seen much change there because there hasn't been much. But now I'm going to do a little bit of coding and this is optional. You can do this if you want to. I've got a square picture. I'm going to make it into a round picture with a bit of a border around it. So hit the text tab up the top here. And that will show you the code for the image. If we look here, we've got image source. This is the whole image right here. Now we've got a style section there where we can add styles. And the last entry is margin right auto, semicolon. Just between the semicolon and the inverted comma there, make sure you don't lop off either of those. Put your cursor between those. I'm going to add border radius 50%. That will make that into a circle. So let's say border radius colon 50% I'll put this little code snippet and anything else I'll write down below if anybody wants to copy and paste it and there it is right there 
I'm going to put a semicolon in so I can add another little line. I'm going to put a border around it, sort of two pixels white to make it stand out a bit more. So I'm going to say border, colon, two pixels, solid, and white in color, FFF, hexadecimal. There we go, we've got our little board around there. Now this is optional if you don't want to code. And these two little lines of code I've just written, as I said, I'll put them below if anybody just wants to copy and paste. Then when you're happy, you can go back to the visual and see what you've got there. Great, so we've got his name, we've got his picture, we've got his testimonial, and we've got a link to where we want to take people. Let's just make this background a little more interesting. Still on the content tab. I'm going to go down to background and you've got color gradient image video pattern and background mask there I'm going to put a little gradient in there let's just add one more color I'll pop that up to the 50% perhaps and double click to add a new color I'm going to make that black the new color and take it all the way down to the bottom there uh, this blue, I'm going to make sure it's the generic blue. There we go. Great, and we can add a pattern to that if you want to. Obviously, this is all option. So I'm going to hit background pattern, add a pattern. I'm going to select perhaps something a little more abstract like the oyster one there. It's great. I'm going to make it white. And the color itself, I'm going to bring the opacity down so you can actually read what's going on there. But we still want to see that in the background a little bit. Then I'm going to take it down in size. Make it a bit, perhaps like a snake skin. Just down pattern size. You've got actual size here. I'm going to click on that. Hit custom size. And let's take the pattern width down to about 30 pixels. There we go. That works for me. Fantastic. So we've got our first slide there. Obviously you keep styling if you're not happy with yours, but that's the way I'm gonna leave mine. You can go over to the design tab. You can add an overlay if you want to. I'm not gonna add an overlay to mine because everything's perfectly legible. You can add that to the whole background or just the text if you want to. We've got only one slide at the moment, so we haven't got any navigation or pagination. We will have when I add a second slide, but if you want to, you can decorate those here. You can do your text, general, it'll do all the text in the text tab here, the line left, I'm gonna keep mine in the middle there. And of course you can do the title and body text separately. And as with everything Divi, there's a huge amount of fonts to choose from. So we've got our little title there. If you wanna check out a different font, just click on it. And as I say, there's a huge amount to audition one. Just put your mouse over it and it will give you an example of that particular font. I'm going to leave mine on the default. I think I'll make it a little bit bolder though. Let's make it perhaps semi-bold. There we go. Okay, well rolling on down, you've got all the various text settings again for your body text down the bottom here. I think I might take that up just a little bit in size make it perhaps 18 you can slide you can type in a value just put in the number it'll put in the pixels for you and you can increment up and down the little arrows there if you need to button I'm not going to decorate the button but if you want to do custom styles for your button go in there just switch that little switch to on and I don't want to change any spacing or sizing or filters so let's say this, that'll take us back to the main slide module. And I'm just simply going to duplicate this. And you just keep duplicating for however many people you've got here. We're going to go into the second one. Obviously, we'll change the name. And we want to change this image. So I'm going to just click on the image and hit delete. Leave my cursor there. I'm going to hit the little add media button again and we'll add Sue James's picture and again we've got a square one here so what I'm actually going to do is just simply save that I'm going to go back up to our first one John Davis there I'm going to copy the little bit of code so I'm going to roll down go to the text tab to get that 
I'm going to copy my border radius and my border two pick solid. Control C without the inverted comma there. We'll save it. Go back into the next one and we can simply paste it onto the next one to make that similar to our first image. So if we go in there, I'm going to pop this into the middle first. So I'm going to click on it, pop it in the middle. Then we're going to go in, we're going to go to the text tab. And just after the margin right auto, if you haven't popped it in the middle, you might be missing the style there. So make sure you pop it into the middle first, or you can type in style equals inverted commas and put your own style in there. But I just need to paste mine after that semicolon right there and before the inverted comma. So I'm going to put a space in and hit control V to paste it in there. And we got a similar picture right now. Great. And I might just change that top gradient color just to make this slightly different from the other one so we can roll on down go to background go over to our gradient and let's just change this color to purple perhaps or whatever color you choose that's fine great save that and we'll be back to our main slider settings again now in our main slider we can decide what elements you want to show arrows and pagination controls down at the bottom here and I showed you where to customize those we've covered links our backgrounds good for everything if we go over to the design tab you've got all your regular design options here overlay like I say with the navigation you can change your arrow colors and your dot colors down here if you choose to I'm happy with mine image won't do a lot because this isn't the image that it's talking about. If I go back into one of these, let's just copy Sue again. And if I go into this and add an image this time in image in video, rather than putting it in manually in the text mode there, let's add an image, doesn't matter what image. Let's put this chap in. You'll see that this image actually We'll roll in from the side and put everything left that's why i'm not using this particular image at the moment so let's get rid of that should go back to it what how it was save that and delete this one just wanted to point that out that we're not actually using the image for the main thing okay well let's go back to our design settings now and that was for the image that i mentioned just there and again, you've got general text, title text, body text, where you can set it for all of them at once in the main setting here if you want to. And also you can style all of your buttons at once here. I don't want to change any sizing right here at the moment or spacing. I might do when we make this full width in a second. Don't want to put a border on it. I might put a bit of box shadow just to lift it off the page there. As you can see, we've got a little bit of box shadow at the bottom there. Great. But if we roll on down, I don't want to add any filters or transform animation. I want this to automatically animate. So we're in the main slider settings, not in one of the slides, the main slider module here, design tab. And we're at animation at the bottom there. You can turn this to on. By default, it's going to rotate every seven seconds or 7,000 milliseconds. I want ours to rotate perhaps every five seconds. So I'll put in 5,000 milliseconds. And I want it to stop when they put their mouse on it so they can read the testimonial, look at the picture and click the button if they want to. If you don't want it to stop, just switch that to on. Great. Well, I'm happy with our little slider now. Obviously, you can keep adding more slides as you need to there. Let's make it full width. So I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to go up into our row up here, the green tab, hit the little cog. I'm going to go over to design, sizing. I'm going to make this full width by taking the width slider, sliding it up to 100%. Then I'm going to copy the 100%, Control C. I'm going to paste it in the max width below, Control V. Or you can just type it in if you prefer. As you can see, we've now got a full width row there. Great. Well, I'd like to perhaps take this down a little bit in width so it doesn't take up quite as much of the room there. And this will make our little slide a little more compact as well so let's do that let's get out of the row here we'll go back into our little slider dark tab for the module in the slider I'm going to go to design I'm going to go down to size 
And if we roll down, we got content width or content max width. I'm going to make my content width about 60%. At the moment, it's 100%. I'm going to take it down to 60%, which will make it deeper and not quite as wide. So if I just type 60 in there, it's put the percent in for me. And there are contents a bit deeper. As you can see, it's just taking up 60% of the available space there. We should be good to go. The only other thing, if I roll up here, we've got a bit of white space at the top. Let's just save this. If I click on here, we've got a section there with a bit of space at the top and a row underneath with a bit of space. So if we go in and take that space away now, we can have it lined up against our nav bar at the top there. So we'll start off with a section, blue tab. We'll go in there, little cog, design, spacing, padding top and bottom. I'm just going to put a zero in. I'm going to hit the chain so we've got none on the top or the bottom. That's better. Now we need to do the exact same thing for the row itself, the green tab. Here's the green tab. Spacing, top and bottom. And again, I'm going to put a zero in there, hit the chain for the opposite side. And there we have it. So let's save our changes here. We'll save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we go. We've got our little full width testimonial slider. Complete with round images and call to action button if people need it. And that's going to roll around. I think I set it for every five seconds. And once you put your mouse on it, it'll stay on that slide until you take your mouse off it. And we've got our navigation and pagination here. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. That's how to create a full width automated testimonial slider for your site. If you have enjoyed this today, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.